This is Right to Real Love Radio, the number one relationship podcast for Christians that will make you happier and smarter. Real lovers, real lovers, how are you guys doing? I am super pumped up today, man. I got two very special guests in the building with me, none other than Will and Dom. How y'all doing this evening? We're doing great, guys. Doing real good. Oh, man. I am so pumped up to have you on here. First and foremost, I got to give a huge shout out to the real lover who uh, put me on to you guys. You guys are doing some outstanding work with your YouTube channel. And the thing that I love about it is you hear all of this talk about pure couples, couples who aren't pure. There's so many different opinions out there. And obviously, that's what we're going to be talking about today. But I just want to take the time to just thank you guys for not only doing what you're doing in your per- personal life, but for being, I guess, quote unquote, brave enough to share it with the world and help other people who either are doing the same thing or have a desire to. So big ups to y'all. Thank you. We're so excited to just share everything we're going through and, you know, let the viewers know how it really is, the raw truth of being in a celibate relationship. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy, you know, but uh, we just feel like sharing our experience with, you know, people who are willing to listen, just show them, like, look, it, you could do it, too. You know, <laughs> you know, God is a great God is amazing. And with him in the center of our relationship, you know, it's great things that come out of it. Oh, man, that's music to my ears for a few reasons. First of all, you know, this is right to real love. So I'm all about you guys keeping it real, keeping it 100, like Dom said. And then, Will, like you stated, man, it's something that's going to benefit a lot of people who are in this boat, myself included, man. This is something that I truly desire to do when I'm ready to, you know, find that one right woman. And I want to do it the right way. And I feel like I'm going to learn a lot from you guys. I know the real lovers are as well. Anybody who's listened to this podcast long enough, they know that we've talked about celibacy here and there. And one thing that they keep asking is, yo, Jay, we want to hear from a couple's perspective. We want to hear from a couple's perspective. And all I can say is, God, you know when the time is right, you'll send the right people (laughs) along. And guess what, man? Will and Dom, y'all just kind of dropped in my lap. And I just feel like it's God ordained for us to be here. And I'm excited. Y'all ready to get into it? Yes, we are. All right. So I want to go back to something that I was talking about before. There are so many different opinions when it comes to purity, especially maintaining purity as a couple. I just want to get y'all thoughts. Do you think that most people believe that it's possible for a couple to maintain their sexual purity before getting married? Let me tell you this. A lot of people don't believe that it is like something that can be done because of the fact that they are thinking flesh wise, you know. Like a lot of people feel like, you know, how in the world can you not have sex before you end up forever with that person? That's like the idea that everybody has in their head. Like there's no way you can do this without testing the ride. So, no, I feel like a lot of people don't think that is it is possible to have a relationship and not have sex and be pure. Yeah, that's very true. Like a lot of, you know, my friends and people I knew, they thought I was a weirdo. They're like, hold on. How can you be with Dominique? You guys never had sex. You guys spent all this time together, but we gotta uh, realize that we're we're sending a message. You know, we're like, I feel like we're trying to create an image that you can remain pure, not have sex, and still have a great relationship. So, you know, that was something that we felt like we wanted to share with the world. I really appreciate it. And I hope I'm not stepping on no toes here. But the one thing that I feel like I have to go out there and just share with the real lovers, because obviously this is an audio podcast and most people think, oh, man, well, you celibate, you know, maybe, you know, these people just look average. Nah, nah. This couple right here, like, (laughs) y'all know, you know, some people be like, yeah, they celibate because, you know, they ain't really got no temptations. Like, no, when you have two attractive people in a relationship and they are committed to celibacy, I can only imagine what type of challenges arise. And we're definitely going to talk about that. But I just felt that it was important for people to know that it has nothing to do with, you know, what a person looks like. And sometimes when you are around somebody that you're physically attracted to, it can make the situation a lot more difficult. Would you guys agree with that? Yes, agreed. <laughs> I bet I bet y'all are looking at each other, giving each other yeah, the look right like, now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, you know, we all have these different opinions. I want to know before you guys were doing this, did you believe that it was possible, not even for other people, but for yourselves to be in the position that you are now? Well, for me, I did not believe that it was possible because if you guys follow us or and 
just a little history about us. We're not virgins. We decided in this relationship that we wanted to weigh into marriage. But prior to that, we were having sex. We were in relationships that we weren't equally yoked. We weren't, you know, trying to live a pure life pleasing to God. So before this, no, I, I didn't think that it was possible, nor did I want to do it, you know? So. Yeah, if I looked at myself five years ago, I would never have thought I would be in this position to be a man that's uh, celibate. Like, you know, just be realistic. As men, you know, we like to <laughs> have our fun, you know. We think it's going to be hard to be uh, committed to one woman. But, you know, God just put it in my heart. Like, listen, uh, I need you to do something. You know, I need you to show people that you can be pure and, you know, have a relationship without having sex. That's real. I love it, man. I, I love the honesty for you guys. And for those real lovers out there that are wondering, how long have the two of you been together? How long have you been on this journey with one another? We've been talking for three years, but together officially for two years in February. I'll make two. Yeah. What's up, real lovers? We're going to take a quick break because I got to give some Facebook shout outs to you real lovers who have been showing love in the Facebook group. Want to give a huge shout out to Jayla, Orfeo, Adina, and Apajok, Anye, and Shante. I appreciate you guys so much for taking the time to answer our questions of the day, interact, and leave comments. I appreciate it. And I hope that you guys will continue to be interacting in our community. Real lovers, that's all we got. So we got to get back into our discussion, y'all. Let's do it. So have you guys been pure the entire time that you've been together with one another? We have not had sex yet, but in the beginning of our relationship, we were kissing, we were like fondling, we were flirting, we were kind of like learning how to be celibate because coming from um, not being celibate and having to learn all of these things that would make us um, more pleasing to God was difficult for us because we transitioned, but the transition like to where we are now versus where we were before is different like we had to learn this behavior we had to grow more spiritually in Christ to you know allow us to actually have the perception like okay I have to let my flesh die and my spirit grow so yeah we were in the beginning we were kissing we were hugging we were you know <laughs> as long as we didn't have sex that's what we were doing so it was like that in the beginning. Now we took the rule of not even kissing, not even trying to hug or sleep over. We used to do like hotels and get separate beds and all that stuff. But then now we were like, you know, as the more we study, the more we get into Christ, we realize that even the um, sight of things can be displeasing to God. So we stopped doing that. So it's a challenge, but we definitely stopped doing it. So now we're at the point where we don't even kiss. So it, it's very hard. <laughs> uh, it, it definitely was challenging. You know, when you just stop doing all those things, you know, which the flesh loves, you have to learn how to, you know, battle your flesh for, to live in the spirit for Christ. It, it was like it was times where. I'm looking at my girlfriend. I just want to kiss and I want to grab her up. And, you know, it, it, hey, it we, we hear, we hear, Will. I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it, it gets to that point, you know, not to be even be phony or fake. Like, I, it still doesn't happen to me to this day. Yes, it happens to me to this day, but I just feel so much more like a powerful man when I can deny my flesh, you know, to please my heavenly father. And, you know, that's that's what puts a smile on my face. You know, there's always going to be days on bad in the flesh where, you know, I'm like, damn, you got to get away from me today. You know, I'm feeling type <laughs> frisky, but, you know, I'd rather uh, do things the right way. Yes. And that's not, that's not to say that sometimes we do not slip up because we're, we're human. Since we started this, you know, no kissing celibacy journey, we probably slipped up and kissed like twice. <laughs> and it wasn't even like a passionate. It was like, a, oh, man, my lips slipped on this. <laughs> so that's like something that we're real about. Like, you know, we have weak points where we have to go and we have to go to God and say, you know, even for this little peck on the lips, God, please forgive me for what I have done because I made a vow to him. We made a vow to him. And when we defile that vow, it convicts us. So we do go back to the cross and we surrender our sins and stuff like that. So Yeah, because honestly, if, it, if any celebrate couple said, man, we never kissed, we never did this, we never did nothing, like I would look at them and be like, okay, <laughs> But well, that's not, it cannot, it only the person that was pure died 2,000 years ago. There's it, no way you can <laughs> be so pure to the point where you never 
try to kiss your girl or anything like that, you know? So just try to be honest and transparent as possible. That's real, Will, because you remember when the king came here, he told us it, it went even beyond our actions. It went to our thought game. And I, I don't think none of us want our thoughts to be on trial and the things that run across our mind, let alone the things that we do. So, yeah, man, I, I agree with you. I believe that it's definitely possible for people to remain pure like you all are. But I feel like there's always going to be some times where, you know, man, it wasn't 100 percent. You know, we got a 98. We got a 99. You know, that's still like, hey, you feel me? <laughs> And I just want to just put that little note in there, like Mm -hmm. Will said, you know, maybe it's impossible, but I don't know if it's 100 percent impossible, because as we get closer to God and closer to like researching what celibacy about, there are those few that take the extreme measures with not even hanging out in private areas or anything like that, who actually do have a celibate relationship. The only difference is they probably don't do it as long as we're doing it. You understand? So I do believe that there's a certain percentage out there who really is remain 100 percent celibate as far as physical. But mentally, I don't know. Yeah. I see, you, you see, you, you, with, you with us, you with us, because that's my thing. I feel like, you know, we could lock down that, that physical aspect of it. But then when we started thinking about the thought life. I mean, you know, sometimes yeah. your mind has a tendency to go places. But you hold up. Where, where, why are you going right there for me? And I wasn't exactly. even thinking about that right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the one thing that I just want to point out that really resonated with me and hopefully the real lovers picked up on it as well is just the fact that when you guys were talking about the reason behind you making this decision, all I heard was God, God being the reason why wanting to set him as the foundation, wanting to make sure you're doing what's pleasing to him. And I think that says a lot because the one thing that I've learned is oftentimes we put the focus of why we do things in relationships on the other person. I'm doing this to please them as opposed to I'm doing this to please him. I'm curious for you guys, what was that process like going from possibly, you know, if if you ever had the mindset of putting someone else before him, how did you make that switch? Well, it was just all about, you know, pleasing my partner. Like I've kind of just put, I put God to the side, you know, I wasn't really uh, the man of faith that I am today. So it was kind of like I was more into living for the flesh, you know, satisfying my flesh with anything, you know. So when it came to my partner, I just felt like, you know, I want to keep my partner happy. I want to, you know, your training thought as a man uh, to sexual encounter with partners was going to keep her happy, you know, buy her things, all these little things. So it switched when I just started feeling convicted for living like that, you know, and it just started sounding like, man, there's more to life than just being out here. And, you know, you feel like God has a higher purpose for you. And it just came to my heart, like, you know what, um, just out of nowhere, like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of living this lifestyle. Let me try being celibate because, you know, after a while, you're just tired of giving your flesh to other people. You know, it, it can get very tricky, it can get very dangerous. So God just put it in my heart, try being celibate, you know, and I will send you somebody who's going to be a great helper. You know, somebody who's going to be there in your life. And after doing it for a year and I'm like, I must be honest, the first year for the, the first six months, I was like, I'm celibate, but I masturbated. You know, God was like, no, you're cutting corners. You know, you're satisfying yourself by uh, masturbating. So he was like, I need you to really be celibate. Don't don't uh, masturbate. Don't engage no other women. Just sit there and be pure. And then six months after that, that's when Dominique came into my life. And she was on the same page. She was like, you know what? She wants to be celibate, too, because she was tired of this the same thing, you know, but... <laughs> Yeah. So for my story, um, I was in a relationship prior and I just was kind of like when we would have sex, it didn't please me anymore. I don't I don't I didn't know why, but it just was like God was just showing me even in my sin that he had more for me. And once I left that relationship, even before I left that relationship, I decided that I wanted to be celibate. And I told my partner at the time, he's like, I don't think you can do it. You know, whatever. And I kind of like moved out and everything just started happening once I became celibate. And then I said to myself, like, I don't want to share my body with any more men besides my husband. That I got to the point where I was done. I was done trying to please men. I was done trying to give them all that I had and all that I, you know, 
like had in my heart and my body. So I was just like, you know what? I'm tired. Like I need to give something back to myself. And that was to be celibate. So once I was celibate for a year, I started talking to Will. And actually, like we were, we've always been friends. But when we became friends again, you know, when he told me he was celibate, it kind of just made me like really like, okay, this is why, you know, maybe God put it in my heart to be celibate because, you know, he's sending me a partner who is celibate and I had to be mentally prepared for that and be on one accord and equally yoked with that. So that's when I decided I wanted to be celibate is when I just got tired of giving all that I had and nothing in return. Real lovers, what is going on, y'all? I am so excited because this is truly a treat. I have gotten emails and requests from you, real lovers, asking that, hey, Jay, we talked about celibacy on this podcast, but we want to hear from a couple who is truly living a celibate lifestyle together. Man, can you bring them on? And I'm like, uh, I don't know nobody like that, but I hope and pray that God will bring those people. And that's what I started doing. I started praying and asking God, at the right season, bring the right couple. And guess what, y'all? He did. He did. He did. And it is such a pleasure to have Will and Dom on the podcast. And I want to give a huge shout out to the real lover who introduced me to him, turned me on to their YouTube's videos. Thank you. You know who you are. And I love you. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for just coming on the podcast, sharing so much good good with the real lovers. Will and Dom, we appreciate you both. Real lovers, I hope and pray that you have taken something valuable away from all of the things that they share today. It's only going to get better. They're very transparent. They're open. They're honest. And I know that it's going to be a benefit and a blessing to all you real lovers as it was to me. Now, before I get out of here, I do want to share with you guys how to hold yourself accountable, especially when it comes to being in a relationship and the both of you have decided to live a celibate lifestyle. The first thing that you have to do is you have to commit to God first and then to one another. As we talked about today in our discussion, it's so often the fact that people put their partner before God, but it's important for us to do just the opposite. We got to commit to God first and then focus on pleasing our partner. And the second thing that you got to do, you got to make sure that God is the center and align your relationship with him. If your relationship is in alignment with God, his will and his word, then that is a sign that that may not be the right relationship for you. So real lovers, I hope and pray that just listening to this discussion, hearing Will and Dom's experiences, it'll provide you with the insight that guess what? It is not impossible for a couple to remain celibate before marriage. Whether those two people are virgins, whether those people have already had sex, whatever the case may be, it's not impossible to do it. And you're going to hear firsthand from a couple, a lovely couple that's doing it, y'all. So I hope and pray that you guys will continue to tune in and take the things that they say to heart. I love you guys and I'm going to catch you in the next episode. Until then, y'all, stay blessed, live, and love life. Thank God for another podcast. Deuces!